So in this project, we're going to be building a movie app and we're going to be using a third party API from the moviedb.org, which gives you, you know, a, a giant database of movies with the title and ratings and images and just a whole bunch of data that we can work with. So we're going to first of all, create the UI, you know, add the HTML, CSS, then we're going to register an API key with the, uh, the TMDB service. We're going to add the JavaScript to make a fetch request to get the data to show the most popular movies at the time, which is what you can see here. Um, we're going to have this hover effect where it shows you the overview of each movie, shows you the rating. We're going to have uh, special colors depending on what the rating is. So if it's like above eight, it'll be green. If it's between five and eight, it'll be orange. If it's below five, it'll be red. Okay, and we're also going to add the search functionality. So if I search for the word hard and I hit enter, it's going to get me all the movies with the title with the word hard, or at least the first 20 or 30. If I search for, let's say over, you can see I'll get movies with over. So uh, it's, an, it's not a giant application, but it gives you a good idea on, you know, using the fetch API, working with a third party uh, data service or data API, and also putting that stuff into the DOM, adding the data to the DOM to the page. So that's it. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're going to get started on our movie app. And the first thing we want to do is the HTML, then we'll jump into the CSS. And then finally, we'll start on our JavaScript to pull in the data. So in our index HTML of our project starter, let's change the title here. I'm just going to call it movie app. And let's change or let's add into the body here. We want a header at the top with a form. I'm going to give this form an ID of form and inside here. Actually, we don't need an action. Get rid of that. So we just want one input in here, which is going to be our search. I'm going to give it an ID of search and also a class of search and it's going to be text. And then let's add a placeholder of search as well. Okay, and I'm not going to add a button, so we'll just have to hit enter. If you want to add a button, you can. But under the header, we're going to have our main area. Oops. And I'm going to give this an ID of main. And ultimately, this is all we're going to have in our HTML because the movies are going to it's going to get inserted into the DOM with JavaScript. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and hard code the HTML so we can style it. So each one will have a class of movie around it and it'll have an image. And for now, I'm just going to grab just an unsplash stock image of some movie seats and it's going to take up the whole thing for now. But under that image, we're going to have a div with the class of movie dash info, which is going to have the title. So an H3 with the movie title and under the movie title, we'll have a span now. This is going to be the rating and the color of the text is going to be different depending on the rating. So it'll be green if it's a high rating. I think it's a 10 point scale, but we'll just say like 9.8. So that'll have a class of green and in the JavaScript will make it dynamic. If it's a low rating, it'll be red. If it's a mid rating, it'll be orange. Now under the movie info div, we're going to have our overview. So class of overview and inside here, it's just going to be in H3 with overview as a label. And then let's do lorem 20 just for some dummy text here. And then that should do it for the movie. Now we're going to have a lot of these movie divs that are going to be inserted from the JavaScript with the, the API data. So I'm going to copy that and just put two more of these movie divs in here for now. And then in our style sheet here, I'm going to use the Poppins font. So I'm going to highlight Roboto here command D highlight it here and change it to Poppins hit escape to get back to my cursor up here and let's use 200 400 for the weight and then the body we can get rid of everything except the font family and the margin zero. Okay, because we're not using flex to, you know, put put in the middle like we have with most projects because we do have a header, you know, that we're going to have and then the movies. So I do want to add a background color here and we'll be using this color and another one throughout the project. So I'm going to put them into custom properties on the root scope. So let's have a custom property or a variable called primary dash color. 
and this is going to be 22254B is going to be that and then we'll have a secondary color which is going to be hexadecimal 373B69 and let's call this secondary okay and then primary color here is we'll say var so this is the syntax for custom properties is var parentheses and then whatever the variable okay so you can see that now the header we want to style that so header um, i'm going to add some padding we'll do one let's do one rem padding and i'm going to display flex and there's only one flex item which is the, the form and i want to align that all the way to the right so i'm going to use justify content flex end which will push it all the way over and then let's style the search box itself so search i'm going to set the background color to transparent and let's set the border so the border is going to be 2 pixels solid and it's going to be the secondary color so var dash dash secondary color and uh actually no wait a minute do we want that no we want the primary color for that actually hold on a second the header yeah the header we actually want to have a background of the secondary color so i'm going to paste that in and change that to secondary. There we go. All right, so I also want the border radius to be 50 pixels for the search form. And let's make sure we inherit for font family we want to inherit our Poppins font and then I'm going to increase the font size to 1 rem. and I'm going to add some padding. So we'll do 0.5 rem top and bottom, 1 rem left and right, and the color of the text that we type in will be white. And that should do it. I also want to change the color of the placeholder, so search colon colon placeholder. Let's make that color. This is actually going to be let's say 7378C5. Okay, so now you can see it has that purplish color and for the focus, so let's say search colon focus. So when we click inside of it, I want to remove any outline, so outline will be none, but I also want to change the background color to be the uh primary color. So var dash dash primary color. So if I click in here, you can see it gets that background color. All right, now let's do the movie area. So or the main area I should say. So for main uh I'm going to display flex because remember all the divs with the class of movies those are going to be flex items within main. So it'll turn it into a flex row and I want them to wrap onto the next line so flex wrap will set to wrap. And then I'm just going to grab the image so each div has a class of movie and then we have an image inside. I want that to be 100% of its container. which right now just goes all the way across. But let's set the movie so each movie class will have a width of 300 pixels. All right, and then we'll go ahead and add a margin of 1 rem to separate them out. I'm also going to do back for a background uh background color, I'm going to set that to the secondary color, so var dash dash secondary color. And we'll add a little box shadow. So box shadow for the offsets will do 0 4 pixel, 5 pixel blur, RGBA, black and 0.2 for the alpha. So it gives it a little bit of a shadow. And I'm going to position this relative so that we can position other things inside of it absolute. I'm going to set the overflow to hidden and I'm going to set the uh border radius to 3 pixels so it's just slightly rounded. Okay, now the movie info is the title and the rating. So class movie info and I'm going to first change the color, make that brighter. And I want to display flex because I want it to be, you know, the title here and the rating over here. So if we do display 
flex. Uh, and let's take any. Let's see, let's take uh, the margin top off of the heading. So movie info H3. Let's set margin top to zero like that. All right. So we have display flex. Let's align items to the center and let's justify content. I want to put the space, the extra space between them. So it pushes the rating all the way over. And then for padding, let's do 0.5 rem, one rem, and then one rem on the bottom as well. All right. And then I'm just going to add letter spacing here and we're going to do point a half a pixel, 0.5 pixel. All right. Now, what should we do next here? The span, which is the, the rating here, is going to have we're going to have the ability to add separate classes depending on you know how high or low the rating is so we need those classes but the base class of or the base element so movie info span let's add a background color and that's going to be for the span let's do uh, var and we're going to use our primary color like that and let's set some padding on that So we'll do 0.25 rem top and bottom 0.5 rem left and right. Good. Let's set a border radius of three pixels and then let's set font weight to bold. Okay, so that's our rating. Now we want the different color classes. So let's just grab that and let's say if it has a class of green Let's set color to green. Actually, that's a little too dark. Let's do. Uh, it's light green look like. Yeah, we can do that. And then let's just take this. We want three of these. And the second one here is going to be orange. And we'll set this color to orange. And then this one here is going to be red and we'll set this one to red. All right. Now, if one of these ratings, like let's say this last one is, is 3.8 and we set the class to red, then it's going to have a red coloring. Now, the last part of this is the overview and the overview is going to be the white part that when we hover over, it's going to you know, it's going to come up from the bottom. So we want to add a transition on that. But let's style overview first. So I'm going to set the background color to white on overview and let's set some padding so it's not up against the sides. We'll do two rem padding. We're going to position this to be absolute. And as far as you know where we want to position this, let's do top, top left, top zero, bottom zero and right zero. I'm sorry, not top left. So we want left and right zero and bottom. All right. So it should look like that. And then. Yeah, and then I'm going to set a max height of 100%. Okay. now we don't want this to show initially. We, uh, what I want to do is have it pushed all the way down out of the box. And then when we hover, it comes up, it transitions up so we can move it down with transform and then we can use translate Y, which translates or moves it on the Y axis. And I want to move it down so it'll be a positive number. Uh, we're going to do 101%, so 100% of its height plus one more percent, which will move it all the way down. If I set this to like 50%, it'll push it 50% down, but we want it off screen to begin with. And then when we hover it, So we'll say overview hover. Uh, I'm sorry, not overview hover. We want movie. So when we, when we hover over movie, which is the entire box, then we want the overview to change its transform translate Y to zero, which is its original positioning. So now if I hover over, you can see it 
it does that, but there's no transition yet. So let's add a transition onto this. Oops, we want transition. And we want to transition the transform property. We'll do 0.3 second duration and we'll do an ease in effect. So that way when I hover over, it just kind of slides up, which is what I want. Okay, so now that we have the design down in the next video, we'll jump into our script JS and pull in the data from the API using fetch and then ultimately insert these cards with the dynamic movie data. All right, so we're going to get started on the JavaScript, but first I want to look at the API we're using, which is the moviedb.org. So you need to actually sign up because you do need an API key when you make your requests. So you can see I'm already logged in here. And if you go to more and then API, you'll see this documentation. And if you look at discover examples, it gives you some endpoints that you can hit. So discover movie, you can sort by, you know, release date or get a certain release date range. You can sort by popularity and so on. But what we need to do is back in this API overview, this link right here, developers.themoviedb.org. If you click on that, you'll see a page like this. And it says to register for an API key, click the click this link here. You can see I already have an API key. So for me, it says if you'd like to edit the details of your app, click here. You should have an option to create a new app. And if I click here, you'll see I just called my movie app. I used local host for the URL and it's going to ask you, you know, why you want this API. What do you plan on doing with this? And you can just say something like, you know, I'm, I'm creating a, a a, a non-production app using this API or something like that. Uh, so once you get that API key, you'll be able to make requests. Now in the JavaScript here, I want to have a couple constants. One is going to be the API underscore URL, and that's going to be HTTPS. And then it's API as a subdomain dot the movie DB dot org and then slash three because that's the version of the API. And then if we look at, if we go back to this page here, discover examples, it's going to be slash discover slash movie. And I want to sort by popularity. So I'm going to use this endpoint right here. So I'll paste that in. It's going to sort by popularity, which is going to be descending. And then in addition to that, let's put an ampersand here. We need our API underscore key. And I'm going to set that equal to my key, which is right here. And I'll just I mean, you guys can use my key. I'm not sure what the rate limiting is or anything. You probably want to create your own. But if you really, really don't want to, I'll leave this key in the in the um, uh, repository. So I'm going to paste that in. And this gives you a ton of results and you can you can you, you can create pagination if you want. I'm not going to get into that. So I'm just going to do ampersand page equals one, which gives me, I believe, the first like 30 results or something. And we can actually see what this gives us if I grab that and go into Chrome. You'll see it gives me an object with the page, the total results, the total pages and then a results array. That's where all the movie data is and it has like the popularity, the vote count. Um, the poster path here is the image. Notice there's no path. It's just slash and then an image file. So we need to get the image path for that. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. We get the ID if it's adult, uh, the title description. So you can use all this data in your application. We're only using a, a small portion of it. Now, as far as the image goes, we have this poster path. But again, there's no there's no uh, URL here. So I have this page. This is from the documentation. We actually need to use something like this before the image name. So what I'm going to do is grab this, not the actual image here, the dot JPEG, but just grab that URL and let's say const image underscore path. And I'm going to set it to that. And this last one is the width is the size. I'm going to use 1280 here instead of 500. But that's going to go before the image. And we actually don't want the slash because if we look at the response here for a poster path, it already has the slash in front of it. So don't add the slash here. 
And then we also want a search endpoint. So I'm going to just copy this and let's call this search URL and it's going to be the same root URL here. But instead of discover, we're going to use search. Search and then uh, slash movie. We don't want the sort by. What I do want, though, whoops, what I do want is my API key. So let's say uh, let's do API underscore key equals and put that in there. And then the last thing we'll say ampersand. We want a query. Oops. So let's say query equals. And what I'll do is just open a single double quote because I want to be able to concatenate a search term from our search box into here. All right, because basically what we're doing is setting the, you know, the most popular movies on the on the landing page when we first get there. But if we use the search box, we're going to use this endpoint and we're going to add a query into here. So just put one double quote here and surround both and, you know, surround this in single quotes. All right. So now that we have that done, Uh, I just want to see if we can make a request and then in the next video we'll do the, the DOM stuff, you know, adding it to the page. So let's create a function. I'm going to use a sync await. So it's going to be an async function called get movies and it's going to take in a URL. And let's say const response or res. We want to await because remember fetch returns a promise. So you don't have to use a sync await, but then you'd have to do, you know, the dot then and stuff. So we're going to say await fetch pass in our URL. And then that will return a promise, but it's not going to give us the, the formatted JSON just yet. We want to create another variable called data and we want to await for res dot JSON that will give us the actual data. So now let's console log data. And remember the response in the browser, it had a results, right? It had a results array. So I want to just look at that and then I'll go up here and let's say get initial movies and we're going to call get movies and pass in our API URL. So I'm going to save this and let's, we can actually make this smaller now and let's minimize that. Okay. So I just want to open up my console here and you can see we have an array of 20 objects and we have access to all this data here. All right. So we know that we can actually get the data. Now let's go ahead and do the search. I'm not doing anything with the Dom just yet. We'll do that in the next video, but let's have an event listener on um, on the form. So Well, we do have to bring that in to do that. So up, I'm actually going to go under these constants, though. So let's say const form and say document dot get element by D. And I believe I have an ID of form. Let me just double check that. So up in the header. Yeah, ID of form. All right, so we'll bring that in. And then down here, let's say form dot add event listener. We're going to listen for a submit and let's put a function here with our event object. And since it's a submit, we need to call e dot uh, prevent default so that it doesn't actually you know, submit to the page. And then let's create a variable called search term and set that to search, which we have to bring in as well which is the in, the uh, input. So we'll say const search. And I think I gave that an ID of search. Okay, and then we want the value of that because remember that's an input. So we want to get that value, put it in a variable and let's check to see if search term exists and also if search term is not equal to anything. All right. So then we'll call get movies, which we have above. 
Now we need a URL. This is where the search API or search um, URL comes in. Actually, let's call it search API. All right. And what we want to do is take the whatever we type in is going to get put in. We want to concatenate that onto our search API. So get movies, search API, and then we're going to add on to that whatever the search term is. Okay, so that will give us a response and then we'll just clear the search dot value. So we'll set search value equal to nothing and then we'll just have an else. So if we submit without having anything in there, I'll just reload the page. So window dot location, oops, window dot location dot reload. All right, so what should happen now is when I search something here, and submit it should call get movies it should take the search api with the search term and uh, give us those results so let's just say um, i don't know i don't even know what to put here what was some of the movies we'll just say the word hard all right so i get a result here let's take a look i just i want to check out the titles so title hard kill Look at this one here, title Die Hard, title Hard Target. All right, so we can see that the search is actually working. Now we have the, you know, the, the HTTP part of it done where we're making requests, we're getting a response. So in the next video, we want to take this, this functionality here and take this data and put it into the DOM so that it shows here. All right, so we'll do that next. So we have our get movies function here to actually fetch the movies by URL. We have our search functionality, but we don't have any functionality where it's it's putting anything into the DOM. So where we have this data results, instead of console logging, I'm gonna have a function called show movies. So let's create function show movies, and it's gonna take in, it's gonna take in the data, but we'll call it movies. And let's first of all clear the main, which is you know the, the whole main part here, because we're going to initially list movies, but then when we search, we don't want to we don't want to add them on to the movies that are already here. We want it to replace them. So we're going to take main, which I actually have to bring in, and set the inner, oops, main dot inner HTML. We're going to set that to nothing. I'm just going to clear it. Let's go ahead and bring that in up here. So we have const main and let's set that to document dot. I think I gave it an ID of main. Let's just double check here. Yeah, so main ID main. So we want to bring that in. We want to first of all clear it. Then we want to take the movies, which is the data that's fetched and loop through those. So for each. So for each takes in a function, we'll use an arrow function here, we'll say for each movie. And then from this movie that's passed in, we should have access to, you know, movie uh, dot title and dot vote average, stuff like that. You, you saw the, you saw the response with all the data. Now I'm going to use destructuring here. So to do this, we can pull we can pull values out of the movie object, okay? Because that's what movie is. It's an object with all the movie data. And if we put um, curly braces here, we can pull out, for instance, the title, and then it will just be a variable of title instead of having to use movie.title. We'll get the poster underscore path, which is the image. We're gonna get the vote underscore average, and we're gonna get the overview. Okay, there's a lot of other data that you can get from this object, from the array, but that's what we're going to use. All right, now we want to create a movie element because what we're going to do now is just is construct one of these divs or, or multiple of these divs here with the real data and then put it into the DOM. So let's say const, we'll call this movie L movie element and then document dot create element. We want to create a div, <clears throat> excuse me, and then we're going to take that movie element and add a class to it. So class list dot add 
and we're going to add the class of movie that's going to give us our initial div and then we'll take that movie element and put into it let's say inner html set that to some back ticks and then what i'll do is grab one of these divs of movie so I'll grab this first one and i'm just going to delete all of them so all we should have in the html is the header and the main nothing in it so I'll save that that's going to disappear for now and then let's paste in that and we'll just clean this up a little bit all right so uh, let's see so we have our image now for the image let's get rid of this hard-coded image and let's put in our expression syntax now this is where we, we we have the poster path right but that only includes the image name it doesn't include the path so here we're going to add our image underscore path variable and then we're going to just add on to that the poster path and then for the alt here we'll just put in the title and then the title will go here in the h3 title and then we have our we have our, our vote average so I'm going to put that in here vote average but remember we also have the classes like green orange and red so I'm going to actually have a separate function that I'm going to create real quick down here basically like a utility function called get we'll say get class by rate and pass in the vote which is going to be the, the you know the vote average and we're just going to see what that is so we'll say if let's say if the vote is greater than or equal to eight then let's return from this function a string of green and then let's do else if the vote is let's say greater than or equal to five then let's return orange else so if it's less than that then let's return red all right and then what we'll do is go up back up here where we have this where i put this class of green let's get rid of that and we're going to put in here the get uh, what do I call it get class by rate and we're going to pass in here the vote average okay so that'll get passed in here and then depending on what that is it's going to give us either green orange or red and then the last thing we want in this inner HTML is the overview let's get rid of that and just put in the overview okay and then we actually need to put it into the Dom so Let's go under here and let's take the main element and let's append child because we're putting this into the main and we want to append the movie element. All right. So now if I save that, we should see our movies. And that looks a little weird. Huh? All right. Why does that look like that? Let me just uh, see what this looks like in the DOM. So we have main, we have div class movie. So it looks like we have two div class movie nested divs. Why is that? Oh, because we we had the div hard coded before, but here we're actually creating it and then we're adding it. So we just want to get rid of this and this last div. All right, so let's save that and that should fix it. Good. And it just wraps. It's just a flex box that wraps the items. But yeah, and we if we hover over it, we get our overview. Cool. Now for the search that should just work because what happens when we search when we, you know, fire off a submit here takes the value the search value checks, make sure it's there calls get movies and hits the search API 
and then in turn, you know, it calls this and loads it into the DOM. So again, I'm going to search for the word hard. And if I hit enter, I get all these movies where the title has the word hard. All right, so it's not the most advanced movie application you can find on the internet, but I think it gives you a, you know, a good idea on how to work with a third party API, how to, uh, you know, fetch data, insert it into the DOM and so on. All right, so that's it guys. Hopefully you like this project. And like I've said many times, uh, if you want to want to add on to this, that'd be great if you can add, you know, a more data or maybe you could have where you click on this and it goes to the single page. Um, you know, there's quite a few things you could do. You could add pagination. So uh, I would encourage you to look more into that because again, tutorials, courses, they're only half the battle. You need to come up with with your own ideas and you know add your own functionality and it's going to take more work than just following a tutorial you're going to have to do some research and see how you do certain things but that's that's the other half of learning in my opinion so that's it let's go ahead and move on to the next video